After an absolutely insane NBA trade deadline, I feel like 2023 free agency is kind of going under the radar a little bit. There are some massive names in free agency and some names that are going to be really impactful in terms of championship contenders this season, possibly losing big time players on their roster. I'm going to go through what I find to be the most interesting free agents for 2023 and what I think could happen for them this offseason. And to me, when you're talking about this upcoming offseason free agency, you have to begin with James Harden, because as we know, he's changed teams multiple times over the last couple of seasons, and you just never never really know what exactly this guy is thinking and when it comes to Philadelphia as I've said in multiple videos whenever you have this combination of Joel Embiid with his injury issues in the playoffs in the past James Harden with his playoff failures in the past and same thing with Doc Rivers as coach the possibility of them losing in the second round and not making the conference finals and what that could mean for the future of both Harden as well as Embiid in Philadelphia is massive there's certainly a possibility here that they make the finals they win the title and everything's fine but you have to admit that with those three factors together Harden Rivers and Embiid and their issues in the postseason at different points in their career Careers, the possibility of them losing in the second round is certainly there. And in that scenario, James Harden could, could really go anywhere. I mean, there's a ton of possibilities that the Houston rumor was floated. He could look at that situation and see the young guys that they have, the assets that they have, and he could see that as a better opportunity in the long run to, to win a championship than what's existing in Philadelphia, especially if Embiid maybe gets a little bit moody about the situation and he realizes, hey, this is not a situation I want to be in. He's shown that in the past, that he understands what a championship situation looks like and what one doesn't look like and whether it's Houston whether it's a variety of different destinations he's going to be a free agent this offseason he took a pay cut to try and win a title in Philly this year and if that doesn't work out and they lose in the second round and don't get particularly close to winning a title he could very easily look at, at a different situation for himself and that would obviously change a ton of different things for Philly this offseason next up is another all-star level player in the Eastern Conference and that's Chris Middleton nobody's really talking about the fact that this guy is going to be a free agent and what that could do to Milwaukee's roster now the assumption at this point is Milwaukee's going to have postseason success Chris Middleton's been a big part of that. They're going to resign him. He's going to want to stay there. There's no real reason for him to want to leave. However, you could look at this as a, as a situation where Milwaukee might not want to give Chris Middleton a max, given his age, given the fact that he hasn't really played a ton this year. And maybe there are other teams around the league like Dallas that have had significant interest in someone like Chris Middleton. Maybe there's a scenario here where they feel like Dallas feels like Chris Middleton is a better fit alongside Luka than Kyrie is. And maybe there's a sign and trade possibility between Kyrie and Middleton. Kyrie, who we're going to talk about later as a free agent. Maybe there's a situation there that could work out or maybe Milwaukee doesn't perform as well in the postseason as they like to and they start to view this as a, a bit of a transition period for this roster with Holiday, who's been awesome this year but has a history of injury issues and Middleton who's getting older and had injury issues this year as well a little bit of a transition away from that style of roster and starting to look at some other guys I'm not saying that that's the case but I'm saying that it is a possibility given Middleton's status as a free agent and again an under talked about free agent for this upcoming offseason speaking of Kyrie he has to be mentioned here as well I've talked about this multiple times since the trade you always have to be aware of of two destinations for Kyrie possibly as a free agent this offseason one being Phoenix to go play with his buddy KD there's a there's a very easy Chris Paul sign and trade possibility there with Dallas as well as him going to the Lakers in whatever way they want to try and manipulate the salary cap and create some cap space or again in a sign and trade scenario he has clear connections to the both of those teams and he has no connection to Dallas apart from whatever success they try and build this season I think it's been clear that Kyrie at times especially in Boston has had this like mercenary style mindset in terms of changing teams in terms of where he wants to go and he's not going to feel bad about changing teams he has no loyalty to Dallas just because they traded these assets for him and that's going to change some things for Dallas moving forward if the season doesn't go particularly well maybe that upsets Luca and or he ends up leaving in the offseason the possibility of him leaving for absolutely nothing is pretty limited unless he wants to go to some surprise max contract destination that I'm unaware of it seems like Phoenix and LA are the two destinations for him in which case they would be getting something back not on the level of Kyrie but something in exchange but even then I mean that would just be seen certainly as a failure in Luca's eyes to bring in someone like Kyrie and for him to leave after three months and that could have some pretty long-term implications as well next up now is Draymond Green I don't know what the rest of the of the Warrior season is going to look like but this this is certainly one of those situations that you got to keep an eye on in terms of he's talked for years about the fact that he's going to want another max contract he's going to want more money the, the possibility of him returning or not returning but going to the Pistons to Detroit has been floated out there for a while and he's even said publicly that like the writing is kind of on the wall in terms of the fact that he might not finish his career as a Golden State Warrior this is a team that's paying a ton of money in luxury tax they jumped they dumped James Wiseman just to get rid of some luxury tax and paying Draymond Green another max contract is probably not in the cards for them and if there's another team out there that wants to offer him one despite the fact that obviously he has declined with age he's still a really good player wouldn't be surprised if there's a team out there that wants to give him a max and if that's the case he could leave Golden State and that's obviously a huge huge negative for them this upcoming offseason but more so from a storyline perspective would he actually choose to leave a place that he's had so much success I, I wouldn't be surprised next up now is a really 
interesting one for me, and that's Fred Van Fleet in Toronto because they had the opportunity to move him at the trade deadline. A lot of people expected them to. He's kind of had a down year, uh, getting a little bit older, not necessarily you know a high upside guy. And yeah, he fits in a lot of different situations. But if you're Toronto and you look at you know where your roster's headed and some of the youth you have here and some of the opportunities you have moving forward, it kind of made sense to move on for the Van Fleet thing because if you're looking at paying this guy like 25 plus million dollars a year for four or five seasons, like that just doesn't really make a ton of sense on the roster. It really limits what they can do in the future. And so everybody thought he was going to get moved to the deadline. The fact that he didn't makes it seem like they are willing to commit to him and sign him, uh, you know, as a free agent, because otherwise there was really no point in keeping him if you don't want to, you know, sign him to a new contract, other than the fact that I guess maybe they want to try and continue to be competitive this season. But he's an interesting one for me because it's either going to be they lose a guy that they could have gotten something for at the trade deadline for nothing, or more than likely they overpay a player that's already showing signs of decline, neither of which are great situations for Toronto. Next up now is another really interesting one for me, and that is Chris Epps Porzingis in Washington. A little bit of, for, of a forgotten guy, obviously, with the injury issues. He's had a good season, and I don't know if he's going to opt in or out or in Washington and what exactly is going to happen there, but I could see him as, as a team that you know, someone like Houston talks themselves into giving you know Porzingis a ton of money. Like There's still enough intrigue and upside there in terms of a guy that can space the floor and protect the rim and, and be a, a secondary scorer for you in terms of what he's looked like in Washington this year, that I wouldn't be surprised at all if he takes a little bit of a pay cut this season, opts out of that for a longer term deal. There's going to be a lot of cap space out there. Teams like the Spurs, teams like, you know, Houston that maybe don't want to get into like the star trade category here, a star signing category here, except for Houston, maybe with James Harden. But apart from that, maybe they just want to get good value in terms of what all this cap space that they have. Like, I think the Spurs, again, are a team to keep an eye on there. And that would be a really interesting guy for me, just in terms of if he's healthy, he's borderline all-star caliber player. And I feel like nobody's really talking about the fact that he's going to be a free agent. Two more now, beginning with D'Angelo Russell with the LA Lakers. It was kind of a, a weird situation how D'Angelo Russell just got dumped by Minnesota at the trade deadline for basically nothing. Uh, and I'm not a big deal guy. Everybody knows that from my past experience with him in Brooklyn, but there is still value to a guy that can create, was having a really good season statistically and, you know, effort comes and goes on defense and the turnovers and just, he's not necessarily a winning player, but there is still value in the spacing and the creation, especially on that Lakers roster. And it's really, to me, just interesting to see if they're going to want to commit to him long-term or if he's just kind of like a holding piece for a potential Kyrie sign and trade this off season, in which case he would end up in Dallas. I I'm really, really interested to see what the rest of the league thinks of D'Angelo Russell, because based off the trade deadline, they don't think very much of him. And that could materialize in like a like a 10 million, a $15 million a year contract for D'Angelo Russell. There's so many guards, there's so many creators, especially point guards that we saw where his value is out of the deadline. Maybe there's a mystery team that comes out of nowhere and offers a ton of money, or, or maybe, you know, the Lakers are really committed to, to bringing him back. But that's going to be an interesting one for me, for sure. And the last step is another guy that I thought would get moved to the trade deadline, and that is Nikola Vucevic, the Chicago Bulls. Chicago's not very good. Um, I, I don't really know what they were doing in terms of keeping this entire roster together. They traded significant assets in exchange for Vucevic a couple of seasons ago, and it just hasn't worked out. And he's going to want a new contract. I think there's going to be interest in him just because of his floor spacing ability, his ability to create as a big. There's not a ton of legitimate post scoring bigs. And I think the league is starting to find a little bit more value in those kinds of guys as everybody basically just switches everything now defensively. And I don't know how committed Chicago is going to be to bringing this guy back on a $20 million a year contract, given the limited success that this roster has had. And, and the limited upside that it has moving forward. But given, again, just like Fred Van Fleet, like given the fact that they didn't want to move him at the deadline makes me think that they are going to bring him back. But if not, all the usual suspects that have all the salary cap space are going to be in, I think, on Nikola Vucevic. And by the way, there's like 15 other free agents from this class that I find really interesting that I could talk about. Kyle Kuzma, Jeremy Grant. I'm not going to talk about them in this video, but as we get closer to the offseason and we start doing some free agency preview stuff, there's a lot of those kind of middle level players that could become free agents and become very, very interesting as we get closer to the true true, true offseason. So I'm interested to see how those situations play out. Let me know down in the comment section below. Apart from these guys, I mentioned in this video, some other free agents you want to hear me talk about that you find interesting for 2023. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time.